Rarely do we get a chance to think about what is really worth dying for. I recently got this chance on the island of Basilan. When news broke of kidnappings in Palawan by the Abu Sayyaf group last May 28, the military and the media mobilized almost at the same time. A firefight erupted in Basilan on the 1st of June. I was with a group of colleagues that took the first boat there. The next morning, we heard reports that the bandits were already in the town center of Lamitan with their hostages. We stopped at a small hospital in Isabella town to see the first casualties. Among them a retired army colonel, Fernando Baje, a Lamitan resident and a newly elected councilman. He and his neighbors engaged Abu Sayyaf in a gun battle just that morning. Sir, kaya mo yan, sir. Esmeraldo. Colonel Bahet was fast losing blood. The hospital's blood supply had run out. Type A. Type A. So, wala, wala kayong dugo rito? Wala man, hindi, wala kami man kami lang isa dito ng We went off-road to avoid the checkpoints of the military that tried to block the entry of civilians and the media. Oh, hindi kami makadaan. Papuntang Lamitan ngayon. Inuhold kami sa checkpoint. Ano sabi? Ano sabi? Nandure-derecho tayo ito. Baba rin doon sila tayo. Hindi rin sabi na. Hindi rin sabi na. Hindi rin sabi na. My companions were veterans of covering previous Abu Sayyaf kidnappings in Polo. Journalists like Aaron Favila of the Associated Press, Denis Sabangan of the Philippine Daily Inquirer, and Romy Gakad of Ajance France Press. Our reunions take place during crisis situations like this. When we arrived in Lamitan, we found many spectators milling about. Eric De Castro of Reuters was the only journalist already here when the firefight started. Andun ako sa kwarto ko, tapos bigla may sumabog dun sa bubong. Oo. May kuha ka? Ah. May nakunan ka? Mayroon din, konti. Ako eh. Hindi ako tapang. Tumakbo ako sa baba. We were wondering why it was so quiet when government tanks called Simbas prepared to charge. Buhay kayo. Salamat. Para sa bayanan. Para sa bayan to. bullets were coming from, but we could hear them ricochet all around us. Sampai yung sniper? Sa mga atas ng ano? Nyug. Mga puno ng nyug. Da pa lang kayo, da pa lang. So, nasa line of fire ba tayo? Oo. Sa lukuhin, nagpapapotop yung militar at saka abu sa'yo. May mga sniper daw sa mga puno ng nyug na nagpapapotop papunta rito. Nasa line of fire daw kami na. Ay, 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 ay! We were pinned down beneath a bus stop roof for about 15 minutes. My knees were shaking, but I still managed to cross the line of fire. I took cover behind a wall together with some soldiers and civilians. Uh, nandito man ako sa likod ng uh, pader na semento pero tumatalsik-talsik yung mga shrapnel. Eh, naalala ko ganun namatay si Willie Vick. Sinamaan lang ng shrapnel yan. Galing yan sa simba na... I found out that Abu Sayyaf snipers were positioned in a church tower near a hospital where the hostages were being kept. Snipers were also atop a water tower and in treetops. The bus stop where we were pinned down was visible from the church tower. The night before, an unsuspecting company of the army scout rangers arriving in a truck were ambushed by the bandits. The scout ranger's buddy was killed right next to him. Itong araw na to? June. Ha? June, mga anak. 
In other countries, military authorities would have been careful about risking the safety of civilians, which is why specialized commandos would be sent to rescue hostages. But the tactics of the military here seem to be to keep attacking the bandits' position in the hope that some hostages would escape in the confusion. This is how a few hostages were able to get out. But even more civilians were hurt and homes were destroyed. The electricity was shut off in Lamitan, so evacuees waited anxiously in the dark. Ang bahay namin yung sa harap ng ano, Central School. Oo, oh, ano nangyari? Yung natamaan ng rocket launcher ng helicopter kanina. So yung natamaan doon yung kapatid ko dito. Pero nasugatan lang siya doon.